Let's move on to talking about main gears, also known to some people as the input shaft. This particular one here, first thing that you're going to want to look for is inside. I don't know how well you can see it. Let me put on an extra light. This is what's called brindling. This is where the bearings have hammered that inner surface area right here. Uh, my finger's too big. This area right here, the bearings have hammered that and it's created grooves in the steel and it's called brindling. All right, if you have that, that main gear is shot. It's time to throw it away. In addition, if you look at these teeth, you will see that they are all suffering from rusting and pitting. If you have rusting and pitting like this, it's time to replace it. This is not a good main gear. This main gear has exactly the same problem as the last one with the brindling inside where the pilot bearing rides. It also has the rust pits along the gearing. Also, this area around here needs to be clear. This is where your synchronizer blocking ring is going to ride. And this has to be smooth. It can't have any pits. Again, this is a bad main gear. Here's another example of a bad main gear. More pitting. However, this one doesn't have quite as bad a brindling, but if you can rub your finger inside and feel grooves, it's shot. You cannot use it. Okay? So that's three bad main gears in a row we've looked at. Let's take this one. Ah, this one's perfectly smooth inside. Now, if you feel it perfectly smooth inside, yet you're not sure how it's going to ride, what you can do is pack your needle bearings inside and insert your main shaft and see if it rocks around. If it wobbles and rocks around real bad, then yes, it's worn out. But if not, you're probably in pretty good shape. On this one, our gear teeth are in pretty good shape. There's a little discoloring, but there's no pits. Okay, this area right here is where the bearing is going to ride. This area here, oh, now, remember what I was telling you about how this area has got to be smooth? If you were going to do a low, something, that, uh, low speed Jeep that was going to, you know, maybe run out to the field ever so often, you could probably get by with that. But if you're going to do a lot of around town driving and highway dri or any dirt road driving where you're going to be putting a lot of shifting and stuff, this area right here is bad and that's going to cause you third gear shifting problems. So it must be perfectly smooth without the pitting that you see in this one. All right, so another bad main gear. Let's move on to number five. I'm going to back this off just a little bit. There we go. This is gear number five. This one, again, has no signs of wear or brindling on the inside. We have no pitting on the synchronizer area. The teeth chevrons along the edge here look good. All of the teeth for the gear are in good shape. There's no pitting. The area where the bearing rides looks good. And this nose piece here is also smooth which this part right here, although it's, it's showing a little bit of signs of wear, this should be, if you measure it with a micrometer, it should measure 
0.726 inches in diameter. Anything more than 0.725, you can forget it. It's worn out. All right, that's because that's where your pilot bearing in the back of your engine rides. So if this is too far worn, then it's fine. This particular one, I've checked it. It looks pretty good. I plan to use this in my secondary backup transmission. You might notice it's got a number two on. That's my secondary for backup. This is my number one that I'm planning to use. This is going to be used in the rebuild video. This one has no wear inside. No wear on the synchronizer edge. The chevrons are nice and pointy. There's no rounding at all. There's no pitting on any of the gears. The bearing surface is good. And the end looks great. All right, with no pitting or wear. So this is a good main gear. This is the one I plan to use in the rebuild. One last thing to point out. This is a main gear for a um, one of the uh, L226 motors. It's got the big motor for the big train. Uh, the transmission's the same, but the main shaft is a whole lot bigger in this one. Okay, look at the difference in these two. Quite a bit of difference. But aside from that, this is actually still in very good shape. This is a good, good gear. I've kept it around because it's my backup for my 62 pickup in case I ever need it. But uh, there's nothing wrong with this gear. But I've wanted you to see the difference between those two gears. The next thing we're going to address is going to be the main shaft. Now, this is your main shaft for your T90. Most of these are going to be in pretty good shape when you look at them. Although, a lot of them, like this one here, was perfectly black when I took it out. But once I cleaned it up, it actually had no damage on it whatsoever. Okay? But it looked bad when I first pulled it out. Yeah, I just thought it was corroded to pieces and it turned out there was nothing wrong with it at all. Alright? At this point, I'm going to address something that I have found. And that is that all main shafts do not appear to have been created equally. What I believe happened is I believe that the manufacturer, even though they had separate part numbers and everything else, I believe that when they built these up, that the main shaft and the first gear assembly came as a match set. The reason I say that is because this first, ge first reverse gear fits beautifully onto this main shaft. This first reverse gear also fits beautifully onto this main shaft. However, if you try to swap them, they won't swap. This one fitting onto this one fits real loose. This one fitting onto this one, you can't get it on at all. It doesn't fit. One main shaft is bigger in diameter in this area than the other one. So what I've seen a lot of people do is they'll say, ah, I ordered a such and such, I ordered a first reverse gear because mine had wear and tear on it, so I ordered a first reverse gear, and the daggone thing was a piece of junk. It wouldn't even fit on the main shaft. Well, that's true. It won't fit on the main shaft, but it might very well have fit on this other main shaft. So I really think if you, if you do plan to replace one of these, I do believe that you need to have them matched up whoever you're buying them from, have them install it on there to make sure it fits properly and buy them as a set. Because otherwise, uh, you may end up with a first reverse gear sitting in a box somewhere that you can't use because it doesn't fit on the main shaft. All right? I j the tolerances just didn't seem to be that close. So that's why I wanted to bring that up. Now let's talk about the things to look for on the main gear itself. You're going to want to look at this area right here. That's the area where your second gear rides. Okay, it rides right here. All right, the clutch hub will be in front of it with a snap ring holding it all locked into place. All right, you're going to look for damage here. Usually there won't be, and the reason being is that the inside of the second gear is a brass ring. 
So if that brass bushing has not worn to the point that it's all the way through and, me and steel to steel, then you're not going to do any damage to that main gear. Next thing you're going to look for is right here, these areas. If these are real sharp and to the point where they'll cut you, try your first reverse gear on there. It should fit nice and snug like this does. Okay, there's no wobble, nothing. That thing fits on there real solid. Same with this one. Okay, it's just a slight back and forth, but that's all you're going to see. There will be, not be any wobble in there. Okay, so you want to look, make sure this is smooth and not sharp to the point that it will cut you. Now what you will find is because the second gear rides directly up against this edge it will tend to roll this edge right here. Okay, so what that does is it makes it to the point where some of the first reverse gears like this one, I think, yeah, this one doesn't want to slide over that. So in order for me to slide this first reverse gear on and off of this end I would need to round off or smooth down these rollovers. You can feel them with your fingers. That keeps this from being able to be installed or removed off of the front. So I plan to clean those up before I take it off. But uh, look for damage there. The next thing you're going to want to look at is the nose right here. Remember that brindling that we talked about in the main gear? Well, this is the surface area that those needle bearings ride on. So if you got brindling on one, inside the one, odds are very good that you're going to have damage on your main gear as well, or main shaft as well. Okay, so check that out, make sure it's good. Okay, it should fit into those needle bearings and be a nice snug fit. Check your threads on the back, make sure they're not galled, make sure that they're clean and that the nut will, will screw on there fairly easy and that's going to be a lock nut or a castellated nut. If you look, you've got a hole here. That hole is for a cotter pin. A lot of people don't believe in the new uh, nylon nuts that go on there, the locking type. Uh, I don't have a problem with them, but you know, I kind of like the old cotter pin. It worked really good for 70 years, so I tend to stay with that. So if you don't have any damage in any of these areas, everything looks like this one, then it's a good main gear or main shaft, you should use it. Let's move on then into this first reverse gear that's on this main shaft. Alright? This gear, a lot of these will show really, really heavy wear along this area right here. Okay? A whole lot worse than what either of these two show. Alright? You can chew up a whole lot of that gear all the way back to about here before it has any effect. Because what happens is this gear slides all the way up onto the other gear, leaving this exposed. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show you that now in my cutaway transmission. Okay, what you're looking at here, this is my cutaway view of a T90 transmission. If you look right now, I've got it in reverse gear. Okay? See how these gears fit together? You would have to tear off a whole lot of that gear on that side before it made any difference mating up with this gear. Alright? And the same thing goes for first gear.